I had originally come to the dive to study astrophysics, if you can believe it. Wow. And uh, just one sort of one uh, quarter, uh, sort of, uh, I did this daily, and I thought, oh, below physics, I'm definitely the journalism is much more exciting. So I switched majors and uh, I did journalism and political science. It was definitely a sort of slow blossoming, I would say. So I, I came as an office manager. I just I was very quiet. I think I sat over there in, in that corner never speaking to anybody, I was just so frightened and I just thought everybody was so incredibly cool. I went along to this restaurant and um, tried the wheatgrass cheese and wrote a little review about it and that was my first article for the daily. So yeah, it, not nothing, it wasn't going to rock, you know, rock the government or anything. When I found out about the Olympia program, it was something reserved for the more senior, either your junior or senior um, year in university, so when I was a senior did it. I applied and got in. It was the first time I felt like a real proper journalist because when you're at the Daily you are a student and everybody knows you're a student but when you go to Olympia you are actually working for a newspaper so you're not working for the university. You know you're working for the Seattle Times, the Spokesman Review, whoever and you're interviewing quite, well you're interviewing powerful people, senators, representatives and you don't want to come across as some moronic student, you know, you want yeah. them to have respect for you and think that you know what you're talking about, so, and equally you have to deal with all the consequences of your actions. One of my friends told me about a story which involved my senator, a senator that I covered, and so I had to, I felt sort of duty bound that I had to tell my editor, I know this story's coming out, um, and it's about one of our senators, and he said, well, you can't wait for that to come out in somebody else's paper. That's going to be in our paper, Heather. I said, but but it's my friend's, you know, it's my friend's scoop. He said, forget that. If if he was unprofessional enough to tell you that, then he has to deal with the consequences. And so I had to write that story. And my friend was really angry because I'd basically scooped his story, and he didn't speak to me for a week or something. And that was sort of the first time I felt the ethical dilemmas of a journalist. My philosophy was forged in this in this time, I would say, in my university years. My ideas about um, the people's right to know, about um, about uh, transparency, about the way power works, about the need to hold powerful people to account. I wrote a book called Your Right to Know, and it was a guide to um, Britain's first Freedom of Information Act. And I told people how you could use the act to find out about you know ev anything and everything right. from pu public bodies and so I thought well if I'm telling people how to do it I ought to do it myself and so I started making requests and one of the main places I made them to was the House House of Parliament um, because I'd covered politics before right. I had I had sort of seen all the documentation and I knew what to ask for so when it when I came to Parliament one of the first things I asked for was about um, the expense claims that members of parliament or MPs put in and claim from the taxpayer. They were totally shocked by this request and they're like, what? Who the hell, who are you again? Where are you from? What newspaper are you from? And I wasn't from any newspaper at that time, I was just a, you know, I was just a writer writing a book. They, they, they constantly rejected my requests but I just Eventually. Keep, kept on asking them and I ended up appealing through the different processes and ended up at the high court. In, in Britain, and I won that case, and it was that case that was the legal precedent that allowed all this documentation to come out. And uh, then Parliament uh, came back into session, and they all started. The MPs started plotting to pass a, a law to exempt themselves from the Freedom of Information Act. And it was about this time that some of the people inside Parliament who were in charge of scanning all the receipts. They were reading all these claims, and they were totally outraged. And so they made an illicit copy of the whole disk of data, and then they sold it to a newspaper in Britain. Because that's and how it works in Britain. Yeah, so they sold it for uh, £110,000, which is about $200,000. And that's how it finally got into the public domain. It led to um, a number of ministers that had to resign because there was one minister, um, 
well, quite a few ministers were claiming f they would change the designation of what was their main home and their second home to avoid paying capital gains tax. The main, the main um, person who was obstructing me the whole way was the Speaker of the House, Michael Martin. He ended up having to resign, and he was the first Speaker to resign in about since 1650 or something, about 300 years. Correct. So that was pretty remarkable. And now we've got a general election coming up in May, and at least about 150 MPs have announced that they're not going to run for re-election, mostly because they you know, feel that their reputation is in shreds. And I think it's really just changed the whole way that politicians there look at the citizen. It was before they felt perfectly entitled to um, take public money and, and not explain how they were using it. I mean, they, they, were, they were almost insulted if, if a member of the public asked them, you know, what are you doing with that money? Uh, and now they're on the defensive and they understand that they're not, it's not a free bag of money that they can just, you know, oh, you know, I fancy a new kitchen. Yeah. Let's uh, put in a claim. <laughs> they, 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 that's, that's, and it's it sort of spread all around. So this idea about accountability has, has definitely taken off. I want to just like film all these walls. I, I love all the quotes. I, know. So <laughs> good. I love this one. Arrogance, like bad breath, is something you never know you have. That's so many politicians. <laughs>